you're ready. <laughs> okay. Uh, quick show of hands. Who does not know who this person is on the screen? Anyone not know who this person is? That's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. It depends. This uh, Jada Pinkett. <laughs> 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 yes. Well, this is this is the tooth fairy. Oh, right. <laughs> we, we all have heard stories about the tooth fairy, right? Some good, some bad, depending on what she left you underneath your pillow as a kid. But there's another story that, uh, that involves the tooth fairy that is untold and unknown, for, especially for many of you that are not in, maybe not in dentistry, but also maybe not in higher education. It involves this person right here, all right? This person is... Uh, kind of like a high-profile guardian of dental education, um, hired and, and um, administered, or not administered, but brought up by the Tooth Fairy. He's a, he looks like a peer, but I can tell you, if your dental education house is not in order, he can cause you some pain, some deep pain, almost like a toothache pain. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not fun. So, so who is this individual? This individual is called CODA, the Commission on Dental Accreditation. <clears throat> CODA is uh, an entity that's a subpart of the dental, uh, American Dental Association, and their goal and their purpose is to make sure and develop programs, make sure that um, develop and to implement standards for both dental schools and also for uh, postgraduate residency program, all right? In addition to that, they're also making, they also are vital in making sure that the programs are in compliance. So why is this important? Why is this something that we need to know about? Well, one reason is, is because of these people here. These are my residents. It's all, about 31 of them. We have 38 in our program. And these are residents that are in training, uh, and advancing their skill set in becoming oral advocates, oral healthcare advocates, but also um, practitioners. For them, CODA means that they have an accredited program that they can go to and learn and, and be trained, but also this accreditation is important for them, especially in New York, because you have to graduate and do a residency program to get a license. So for them, CODA is very important. Also, it's important for institutions like this, which is my institution, Bronx Lebanon Hospital. All right. Um, for CODA, Bronx Lebanon is uh, for CODA. I'm sorry, for Bronx Lebanon, CODA means a lot, a lot of different things. For a hospital to have a, a program, a dental residency program, at um, at a hospital, what it does, it ensures that the general public is receiving quality dental care. And that's important in, in this community. Uh, we're actually in the poorest congressional district in the country. Not in New York, not in New York State, but the entire country. So making sure that, pres uh, that, that um, not residents, but patients have quality dental care is important. But in order for that to happen, three things must, must incur. Uh, must occur for the residency program. Number one, the residency program has to be up to date. It has to be able to follow the rules and follow the standards. But also, the big thing on the bottom is deals with code. It must be accredited, and it must also pass accreditation. Part of that process in making sure that that happens is uh, making sure that the program has an ongoing and continuous improvement, self-improvement process, but also they do that we do an analysis of the program uh, on an annual basis, but also on a, on a monthly uh, and quarterly basis. So that's the actual foundation of my project, uh, doing a self-study analysis and evaluation of our advanced dental education residency program. So an overview of what we, uh, what I actually did was we took about 12 months of it was an in-depth evaluation of our strengths, 
our weaknesses, our program effectiveness, as per the five code of standards that we are that we're uh, obligated to make sure that we're in compliance with. But it was also in preparation for an on-site accreditation that, that happens every seven years, and it usually lasts two days. So, yes, Dr. Freeman already knows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is 12 months uh, worth of work. And it's getting, getting this 355-page document together. Um, so I brought it because this is what I've been doing in addition to the MHA program. It's a long, tedious process, and we've actually we had a lot of challenges. The first challenge was the fact that the two previous program directors were no longer at the institution. We also had a challenge that the four co-directors, one of which we've had no experience in doing this before. So this was our first rodeo, our first time going through this very important accreditation. And then the last challenge was with our with our uh, chairman, who's been at the department for 27 years, and he has a lot of input. He had a lot of experience. This is maybe his fifth or sixth, maybe even more, uh, accreditation. But, the, but the, the issue is, it's up to us as program directors to administer the program. We are responsible for administrating the program and also being able to discuss when the site visitors come, it's us that they're asking the questions. They're not asking the questions of the chairman. So the focus is on these two components, on the educational and administrative components of the program, and also as relates to the sponsoring institution, uh, which is Bronx Lebanon. These are the five standards <coughs> that we had to review. And we also uh, utilized those standards in areas that allowed us to look at what are our, our self-identified strengths and weaknesses um, as part of our assessment. So some of the strengths that we that we that were indicated deal with our visits. We have over 95,000 visits, which was an increase over the last three years from 72, 73,000 to 95,000 visits. We actually just went through an expansion three years ago. We moved across the street from where I used to be a resident uh, into a larger facility with increase of chairs. Another strength was the fact that we over the last 24 years, we've been receiving uh, money from HRSA, Health Resources and Services Administration, uh, through grants. We did some surveys, and through our surveys, as part of our outcomes assessment, um, the residents, 98% of the residents agreed that the objectives for the program, the things that we have as part of their training are being met. 100% of them had confidence that um, they were prepared to go into private practice, 100% of them were also likely to recommend the program to, uh, to others, and they were satisfied that they made that decision to do a residency. In dentistry, residency is not required, which is a little bit different than it is in, in medicine. Some other strengths that were highlighted, mentor groups. Because we have a large group, we have 38 residents, which is the second largest number of uh, residents for dental residency in the country. We break the residents into five groups, about five, I'm sorry, about five to seven in each, and they're headed up by our faculty members and also by our, our chief resident. So that was a strength that was, uh, that was highlighted. Uh, our resident grads come from, are diverse, speak different languages, and, and make up about uh, 10 to 11 schools throughout the country and also internationally. Very patient experiences, uh, and our faculty. Faculty are really, really knowledgeable and are really um, uh, have bought into teaching the residents and being there for the residents. In addition to those strengths, we also identified some weaknesses, some some weak links that we had, all of which um, we that were revealed during this self-study analysis. Now, even though this this weakness in this weakness that we identified, even though the residents are actually uh, getting the experiences and satisfying the standard, one of the areas that we saw that was where they it could improve a little bit more was their experiences in the OR. So we looked at the strengths, we looked at the weaknesses, and we saw some opportunities to, to improve. So 
what we did was three things. Number one, we actually redesigned one of the rotations that the residents have. And this rotation is in anesthesia. And typically, they're in anesthesia for two weeks. And so we redesigned that rotation so, such that uh, for 10 days, usually there for 10 days, for, for one of those days, they actually go to the OR with the ENT, ear, nose, and throat. And they're actually, um, we just started it actually about three, two months ago. And that's, that's our area of expertise. So that was a, a great redesign. Uh, in addition to that, residents, when they rotate through pediatric dentistry, they actually have three times where they actually go, are able to go to the OR to have more experience, more exposures. And then also we have a, a general dentist that has uh, cases that he takes to the OR for special, special needs patients. So that was another way of us being able to redesign and taking a, an opportunity to, to improve. Another thing that we did is we had to change and revise our outcomes assessment tool of how we evaluate the residents on a quarterly basis. Again, due to the self-study that we, that we did, we were able to make sure that the attended outcomes of residency training and how we evaluate them were matched up one-to-one. -one. And prior to the study, we had a questionnaire or evaluation sheet that read one, two, three, and then the actual uh, uh, outcomes in the, in, the, in the GPR program were a totally different language. So we actually had to revamp that and make sure that they were speaking the same language. In addition to that, we actually had some outcomes um, as part of this assessment. Throughout the year, we, we give residents surveys and we get some feedback and give uh, progress reports. But one of the things that we do at the end of the year is an exit survey. And these were the, the outcomes of, of that process. They were satisfied, again, they were satisfied in their decision to do a, a residency. They had confidence and they felt they were prepared for private practice and that they were likely to recommend program to others. But also we had another outcome which was um, very, very, uh, uh, how can you explain? It was, it was very anticipated and I think Dr. Um, Friedman will be able to appreciate this very, very soon. But we had our accreditation visit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in August, August 23rd and 24th. So up to that point, uh, many of you may you know, see me with uh, in class, and some classes I was able to go to, some classes I was not, uh, all in preparation for this day. And on this day, what happens at the end of the two-day um, visit, they actually sit us down in this room, in a room with all the program directors and the hospital executives, the chairman of the department, and they report their findings. It's a preliminary report, unofficial report. So you can imagine, all of us are sitting there like, all right, well, do I have a job for tomorrow? <laughs> uh, uh, is Dr. Gates going to be able to uh, retire now and go off into the sunset and, and live happily ever, ever after? So the outcome of this August 24th, 2017, was a success. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So if any of you are having accreditation issues, I'm your guy. <laughs> I'm your guy. But it was uh, very um, um, beneficial and relieving to, to get this accreditation uh, through 2024. So with that, I just want to thank, um, actually thank my chairman uh, in discussing things about the, the, the future of our department and the residency program. One of the things that he encouraged me to do was to look at ways that I can Prove myself, but also possibly be prepared for some new transitions. And I don't know if he was hinting and saying, hey, I'm leaving in, in, in a year or two. Let's get you prepared for this role. But also one of the things I wanted to say thank you to the program is every week, it did not fail. Every week, there was something in the modules that was applicable to work. Every week. So... Uh, without being able to, to do the program, I wouldn't have been able to have that, uh, that experience. Also, I want to give thanks to, of course, <laughs> I mean, she, she needs no more introductions at all. <laughs> Professor uh, Richmond, thank you so much for helping me through this process. 
even the, during the times I missed some deadlines. I'm still willing to help. <laughs> so that was great. And again, uh, Dr. Gates, uh, he's our chairman. He's actually the uh, older brother of, um, um, I can't remember his name now, Skip Gates, the professor at Harvard. Yeah, you've heard of him before? Um, but again, this was, a, a, I think, a, mo a momentous accreditation visit because it's, it's definitely going to be his last. He's been talking in the last five years about he's been retiring. And I appreciate him for uh, being a thorn in my, my foot uh, <laughs> during this process because he was teaching me, getting me prepared for any scenario that may come up with the accreditation uh, visitors and consultants. So thank him also. So any questions, comments, discussions? Thank you, Darwin. <laughs> Lots of questions, comments. Did you get the pleasure of going through an accreditation site visit? Yes. That's always fun. I have a lot of pleasure. Do you think those are bad? Try the DOJ. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You literally sit on your chest and you say, yes, sir. Uh huh. <laughs> Any questions at all? There we go. It's, um, well, I know every specialty defines, well, thank you for the presentation, first of all. Um, a lot of information out of that. Um, I know every specialty has a different definition for special needs patient. What would be a special needs patient to you guys? Um, those maybe that, I know for us, we get a lot of patients that maybe have uh, developmental disability, uh, autism. Those are the two that we you know, we'll see more often as far as Dr. Sullivan, one of our attendees, taking those patients to the AR. It's more of a comment. Congratulations. Yes, and, thank you. Uh, thank I'll you for you. sharing your experience. I think those of us who have gone through an accreditation process to be um, successful or unsuccessful um, and can definitely empathize with what you've gone through. So um, thank you for sharing that experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some more no. questions. Drink some me. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> This is just something personal for you. Go hunt. Go hunt. Go hunt. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Man, you know, he's a rival. He's a rival from my old private school. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> okay, I was wondering if that was his son. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of yeah, weird. <laughs> Only you would know. Yeah. Got it. Okay. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> secret. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you thanks, so very thanks. much. All right, so Ben, take us home. There you go. This <laughs> way. been in this world here more than once. I, I think it's, uh, yeah, Thank you. Still, there's always something new. Yeah, it, it really is. <laughs>